In this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how to achieve any goal you want, whether that be in work, whether it be in your body, whether it be in your love life, everything comes down to this whiteboard. I'm gonna break it down into individual videos over the coming months to try and give you the total package to transforming every aspect of your life. But when we look at it at the start with, we're gonna bring it all the way back. Most people just finish on this end outcome here, which is our goals. It's like, oh, what do you wanna achieve? I wanna lose 10 kilos, I wanna get abs. What do you want to achieve? I want to make $500,000 with my business and have freedom. Uh, what, what do you want to achieve? I want to have, find the love of my life and truly feel connected. All of this comes down to an underpinning goal that we want in life is to increase our well-being and increase our happiness. You think that I'll, get, I'll be happy when? And that's, the, that's literally the sentence that comes out of people's lives. I'll be happy when I get, achieve this. I'll be happy when I achieve that. I'll be happy when I have this. But really, we just want well-being and happiness, and we can have that right now today if we understand this whiteboard. It's moving forward towards the best version of ourselves. So if we pull it all the way back here, it's this word here, it's arate, to express the best version of ourselves moment to moment to moment. So when we're looking at goals, it's like, what do you want to have? Why do you want to have it? Are you willing to pay the price to get there? What's your expectancy to achieve it? And what's the distractions, environmental distractions, daily distractions, food distractions, people distractions, everything. We have to cover this off in goals before we actually gonna achieve our goal. And if you only focus on this part, it's why you get started, motivation is fleeting, and then you're like, oh, I'll start again on Monday. Oh, I'll start again in 2022. I'll start again in 2023. Some of us at least come back to this part. It's like, I'm gonna figure out the process. Like, what do I need to do? So we go to have, and then what do I need to do here? What's the process? You know, do I need to focus, find out my consistency? I need to start getting data, because obviously, if I wanna save money, I wanna buy that house, and you put X amount of dollars in the bank every single week, if I wanna achieve the body, I need to do X amount of calories, and X amount of movement, X amount of steps, X amount of sleep. We need to have the data, we need to understand controlling the controllables, and this is the biggest thing, it's understanding a little bit of stoic philosophy. And it's like, I can control what I can control, which is my actions and my emotions. I can't control anything outside of what I can control. We really have to get this down to nail the process. Then it's like, where am I focusing? And then we're going into reflection. You reflect every single day on the data. What went well and what didn't go well and what am I going to do better next time? Lastly, all of our process is underpinned by our fundamentals. It doesn't matter if you want a better work, love, or body. You need to sleep, you need to have gratitude, you need a gratitude journal, you need to move, and you need to have better nutrition. If you were sleeping like three hours a night, four hours a night, broken sleep, not getting any sleep quality or quantity, your relationship is gonna suffer, you're gonna snap, your emotions are gonna be out the window. If you're not moving, your state management's also gonna suffer, so, suffer. so your business isn't gonna be on point. If you're not fueling with your nutrition, you're not gonna recover, your training's not gonna be on point. These fundamentals underpin any goal in work, love, or your body. So then some of us at least step back here. It's like, what are the habits I really need to achieve and really need to deploy into my life to live with Arate, to live as the best version of me? I need to identify consciously what are my old habits? How do I need to get rid of them? What are the new habits I need to put into my life to change the life for the rest of my life? And it's a game versus shame mentality. If we're using the data, it's game. If I actually follow through or if I fall down, it doesn't matter. We don't shame ourselves. It's like, you'll never achieve the body. You will never achieve the business. You will never find that person you love. We can't shame ourselves because all of a sudden that will shift our identity into more of a fixed mindset. We need to make it a game. It's okay. You're not going to win every single day, but you just need to win more days than you lose. And that is the focus for us in our habits. Then we come down to our trigger, our response, and our reward. We need to know what are the positive triggers in our life? How can we trigger them to have a correct response or the action or the habit that I'm trying to deploy and the reward I'm going to get from it? And I want to try and focus on the rewards I'm going to get for the moment. When I train, I don't want to go, oh, if I train today, I'm going to get abs in 12 weeks. It's like, I train today because I want to feel good today. I, you know, Send the gratitude because I want to feel good today, not because I want to try and marry that female. It's like, I want to feel good in this moment. And we have to try and bring it back to the now. Then when we go through this, what's our negative triggers? How can we remove them? Or what's different responses? Or what's new rewards we can put in? I need to look at my environment. 
change my environment, you're going to change your life. Your life will be exactly the same in five years, except the new knowledge you put into your life and the new people you put into your life. And you can also keep the same knowledge and keep the same people and your life will be exactly the same. So then we go stacking. How can I stack my habits so I can flow from brushing my teeth to going for a run? And if we can get a great habit stacking routine, morning, PM, daytime with work, we can truly put in new habits to make us stick to them. Implementation intentions. We all know that if I can put a time and a place on when I'm gonna put my habit, I'm more likely to do it. Then accountability, find an accountability buddy. You know, you want to find a select group of people that you respect, who you're accountable to daily and weekly and monthly to stick through what you said you're going to do. Then we go to proximity. So it's proximity and accountability. It's proximity of people who are doing better than us. So we, our thermostat, we rise to the top. Okay, and that's the thing with proximity. If you do this and you only do this, okay, this is where yo-yo results happen, right? Because you haven't changed this part. You're going to get the abs and then you don't have a cemented identity, you achieved an, a, a result, and then you fall off. You're like, oh shit, I gotta put 10 kilos on, I put 20 pounds back on. I need to go through the cycle again. The cycle will keep repeating itself until you fix this stuff. Because the do times the have is a yo-yo. We have to figure out the B. And then we come over here. So our virtues, there's universal virtues and there's unique virtues unique to you to make sure you are living with well-being and feeling great every moment of the day. Our universal virtues we should be living by are hope, curiosity, gratitude, love, zest, energy. So when we're looking at curiosity, it's so crucial. And that's why when we're looking at the game, curiosity, if something goes wrong, you didn't follow that nutrition plan, you deploy the universal virtue of curiosity. It's like, what could have I done differently? How could, what happened? Why did it happen? And we get truly curious. We want hope in there. So it's hoping that tomorrow is better than today. Hope is the bridge between our comfort zone and our uncomfort zone. So we want to take that bridge, getting uncomfortable every single day and using that virtue of hope. Gratitude, gratitude gives us perspective. Shit goes wrong in our life, we deploy gratitude. And if you actually start doing a gratitude journal, which is in part of our processes, you're gonna be 25% happier in the next three weeks. So I would get that started straight away. Love, love conquers all. Love to those people who are against you, those haters. Love towards yourself, love towards everyone around you, and love towards your body because obviously that's where the fundamentals come in. And you want energy, state management, bringing a positive you into every single moment of your life will allow you to push through all the rest of it as well. So we have these here. We have our universal virtues. There is unique virtues as well. And to be able to get the right virtues, we understand stimulus and response. The stimulus in our life and the response we're giving it. And we expand that gap between stimulus and response to choose the best version of ourselves. Then there's the hero or victim. Which card are you playing today? Am I playing the hero? Am I playing the victim card? Am I playing blame? Am I playing that card of you know, justification of why I can't do it? Am I making excuses? You have to understand which card you're playing moment to moment. Then we look at our values. What are our values and what are we truly driving us? And for all of us, we should be trying to live as the best version of us so we can be the best version in every aspect of our life. Last thing we come across to our identity. Our identity comes down from our self-image, how we see ourselves, okay? We should have an identity where we're truly trying to flourish. We know there's a gap between where we are and where we're capable of being. And our goal is every single day be motivated to close that gap, to truly flourish, to live with arate, to become and achieve our potential in life. And this is achieved by our self-image, the stories we tell ourselves, those ants, the automatic negative thoughts, our purpose in life. And you know, when we look at our purpose in life, you know, Stephen Covey says, you know, begin with the end in mind. You know, you're at that funeral. What are people saying about you? What did you achieve? What's all the amazing character traits that you have? Did you live with these virtues? Because that's what people remember. Were you a virtuous person? They don't remember what car you drove. You remember how you made them feel. So the end in mind, like how can you live right now? We look at the limiting beliefs, like identity creates limiting beliefs on can you have the work or the business? Can you have the love? Can you have the body? So we need to remove the limiting beliefs and place new unlimited potential beliefs inside your identity. Then we go into anti-fragile mentality. So you aren't fragile. If you meet a challenge, it doesn't make you weaker. It makes you stronger. Every challenge I face, you kick me, I get stronger because of it. And then we have a fixed versus growth mindset. You 
can become anything you want. You just have to dedicate the time. And if we have this identity, we have lifelong results in anything we want in life. And that is goal setting. That is how we achieve the abs. We don't want yo-yo results. We don't want just partial results. We're gonna change our life for the rest of our life and become and uncap our potential in life.